Do you want to add some of the coziness and color of fall to your home? Well, in today's video, I have 10 DIY projects that are full of the warmth and rustic charm of the season. And the best part is they're all budget friendly because I'll be repurposing and transforming thrift store finds. So if you're ready to create some inexpensive, one-of-a-kind autumn decor, let's get started. I love nature-inspired decor for fall. It's just so warm and cozy. So I thought I would add some natural elements to this thrift store lantern. I took a bag of Dollar Tree moss and began covering the lantern using hot glue. It adheres much easier than you might think, but it does take a minute to cover the entire lantern. Once it was completely covered, I went back and added some additional moss to cover some of the edges that were poking through. Since my lantern had a small opening at the top, I decided to hot glue a fake bird in that opening, and I also added a small bundle of angel vine and some more traditional looking Spanish moss. I had originally thought that I would add a taper candle to this lantern, but then I changed my mind, so I popped off the candle base and hot glued a small wood slice in its place and then I filled in around the wood slice with some Dollar Tree moss. To give the handle a more rustic look, I wrapped it with twine. Then I applied a little spray adhesive and sprinkled on just a dab of the moss. For some additional interest, I twisted a strand of white pip berries up one side of the lantern. For safety reasons, I would only be able to use a battery-operated candle in this highly flammable lantern. However, I couldn't resist adding two of these adorable mushroom candles on top of the wood slice. I used a heated foam cutter to cut the base off one of the mushrooms to vary the height and hot glued them in place. Although this thrift store wood plate was very pretty in its natural state, I decided to paint the inside portion with white chalk paint. After the first coat had dried, I gave it a second coat. Then I pulled out a pretty floral napkin that I had purchased at Home Goods, and I began cutting around a section of the florals that I thought would fit nicely on the plate. When decoupaging with napkins, always check to see whether you're using two or three ply napkins so that you can make sure that you remove all of the plain layers. Mine were three ply, so I checked to make sure that I had removed two white layers. Next, I applied a thin, even coat of glossy Mod Podge over the entire painted area of the plate. Then I carefully placed my napkin onto the Mod Podge using my paintbrush to smooth it into place and brush out any wrinkles. One section of leaves folded and tore when I tried to straighten it out. So I just carefully scraped it off and cut those same leaves from a different section of the napkin and then lined up the new piece with the existing pattern. I also cut another small section from my remaining napkin to fill in a blank area of the design. Then I went over the entire napkin with another coat of Mod Podge. In all, I applied three additional coats of the glossy Mod Podge. I 
I recently picked up this shadow box-like frame for just $1.49 at the thrift store. My original thought was that I would add some loose dried flowers inside, but once I removed the duck art, I was intrigued by the textured material it was made from and ultimately decided to go in a different direction. First, I gave the white frame a couple coats of moss green chalk paint. Next, I took a hammer to the duck. I wanted to even out the foam so that the embossed shape would not be noticeable from the back side. Then I applied some watered down antiquing wax to give the foam an earthy brown color. I cut an autumn theme poem from an old book that I use for crafts, and I used a ruler to tear the edges to create the size that I wanted. And then I applied some spray adhesive to the foam and adhered the poem. Next, I used hot glue to attach various pieces of brown and green moss to go around the edges of the poem. I like this moss variety pack that is sold at Joann's stores and on Amazon. I was loving how the moss looked, but I was not loving the lumpy texture of my paper. So I printed out another autumn poem on cardstock, and for additional reinforcement, I also cut out a small piece of cereal box cardboard and glued the poem to the cardboard. Then I applied glue stick to the back of the cardboard and adhered the new poem over the old lumpy one. Much better. Then I just used a razor blade to remove any paint splatters from the glass, and I cleaned the glass really well on both sides, and finally returned the duck to her frame. But this time the duck was on the back side. I picked up a really heavy, nice canvas tote bag at the thrift store. I was going to turn it inside out and make a pillow. Despite the heavy fabric, you could see the design on the back side, so unfortunately I only had one good piece to work with. So I decided to use some fabric from a thrift store flannel shirt for the back side of my pillow. I cut off the large back piece of the shirt and then cut a square the same size as my piece of canvas. Then I pinned the two pieces together and stitched them on my sewing machine, sewing three sides and part of the fourth side, leaving an opening just large enough for my hand to fit through. I printed out a vintage image of a pheasant onto a piece of fabric transfer paper for use on light colored fabrics. You just run it through your printer like a piece of paper. They're very easy to use. After printing, you just trim off the extra paper and then place them face down on your fabric and press them in place with a hot iron for a minute or two. Then just peel off the backing paper. I applied the words separately so that I could get them positioned precisely where I wanted. Then I just stuffed the pillow and sewed the opening closed. But if you don't sew, you could just hot glue the opening closed. I had recently purchased two men's flannel shirts at Goodwill and decided to use them in a few additional projects. I cut off the arm cuffs, cutting as close to the seam as possible, and then I wrapped one cuff around an empty glass jar and buttoned it closed. Although it fit perfectly, I added some hot glue to hold the fabric down and keep it from curling up. 
I wrapped the second cuff around a glass votive candle holder. It fit perfectly too. I thought it would be extra cute to add some dried flowers or feathers behind the cuff. Of course, for safety reasons, I'll only put a battery-operated candle inside. I wasn't done with those flannel shirts just yet. I cut off a pocket and the button placket from the front of the shirt. I hot glued the two ends of the button placket onto the back side edges of the pocket to create something that looked a lot like a little purse. This could totally be used as a phone carrier, but I was planning on turning it into fall decor. So I added a little pillow stuffing inside the pocket to fill it out and then I cut a small piece of cardboard to slide inside to add some stability to the fabric. Then I just added some fall florals from my stash and filled in the top of the pocket with some Spanish moss. had an old broom in my garage that I purchased at a garage sale for a dollar. And even though it does look like a witch's broom, I decided to turn it into something prettier that could be hung from a wall or the front door. I grabbed some floral stems from my stash and used florist wire to attach them to the top of the bristles. I downloaded a vintage broom advertisement from a public domain website, which I'll have linked in the description box for you. This round wood piece came off of a thrift store clock that I use in a different project later in the video. I cut the image in a circle to fit the piece of wood and adhered the image using spray adhesive. I went over the edges of the paper with sandpaper and then used an X-Acto knife to cut out the center hole. I drilled a hole through the top of the stick so that I could create a loop of twine for hanging purposes, and I attached the round wood label to this twine. To create a rustic looking bow, I cut up strips of fabric from, you guessed it, one of those flannel thrift store shirts. I cut the strips about three-fourths of an inch wide and about six inches long and piled them on top of one another until I had a good amount. And then I ran a piece of florist wire around the middle, pulling it tight and twisting it to bind them all together. Then I threw it into the dryer for about 30 minutes so that the flannel would ravel and crinkle up. Once out of the dryer, I twisted the ends of the wire around the top of the broom bristles. I have an easy project for the mushroom lovers out there. Take one of those ceramic mushrooms from Dollar Tree and drill three small holes in the top. You'll need a special glass and ceramic drill bit that you can pick up for a couple dollars at any hardware store. If you like the colors of your mushroom, you don't have to paint it, but I wanted to give mine a slightly different look. So I painted the entire mushroom with some light brown chalk paint. And when that was dry, I dabbed on moss green chalk paint over just the top of the mushroom. And when the green paint was dry, I used an old rag and dabbed on some antiquing wax over the entire mushroom. Finally, I sprayed on a clear top coat to seal it and then I added a few floral stems in the tiny holes.
I had no idea what I would do with this broken wall clock, but when I saw it was only marked $1.49, I couldn't pass it up. First, I took it outside and sanded off the numbers. Then I used pliers to loosen up the nut that was holding the clock mechanism in place, and I unscrewed the small screws that were holding the small wood round in place. To fill in the screw holes, I applied some painter's tape on the back side of the metal grid, and then filled in the holes with wood putty from the front side. While the putty dried, I applied antiquing wax to add some color back to the wood. Once the putty was dry, I sanded it smooth and painted the metal grid with black chalk paint. Since the clock now looked like a round window to me, I decided to add a Halloween scene to the window. I had picked up this wood cat and pumpkin sign at Dollar Tree, and I used a putty knife to pry the two pieces apart. Then I painted the cat black, of course, and I painted the pumpkin with some orange and some green chalk paint. When the chalk paint was dry, I used a black paint pen to fill in the face of the jack-o'-lantern. I wanted to attach the cat to the back side of the window, so I used a combination of Gorilla Glue and hot glue to adhere it to the metal grid. I decided to attach the jack-o'-lantern to the front of the window to cover a discolored spot on the wood frame. Finally, to take this Halloween window scene to the next level, I hot glued a string of Dollar Tree colored lights around the perimeter of the back side. I had green lights on hand, but I think yellow or purple would look really cool too. I had an idea for combining these dark floral napkins with a thrift store vase. I cut the napkin into strips and then traced the vase shape onto each strip. Then I cut out these shapes for each side of the vase. I applied Mod Podge to the vase one section at a time and then I peeled away the back two plain layers of the napkin and carefully placed the printed sheet face down onto the Mod Podge. I used my paintbrush to smooth out the napkin and remove any wrinkles. I repeated this process all the way around the vase. I just cut some small pieces from the napkin scraps to cover the bottom couple inches of the vase. Once the entire vase was covered with napkin, I applied an additional coat of Mod Podge over the entire vase. As you can see from this photo, the inside of the vase looked so pretty. At this point, I think I should have painted the outside of the vase white. However, due to the black background of the napkin, I decided to use black paint mixed with some salt wash. I applied two separate coats, thickly dabbing it on. When the paint was dry, I sanded it down a bit to remove some of the peaks. It looked okay, but I thought it might look better with some gold highlights. So I used my finger to rub on some gold rub and buff wax. I thought it looked too gold in some areas and sanded some of the rub and buff off for a more subtle effect. I also applied some rub and buff to the top edge of the vase for a finished look. Finally, I brushed on some antiquing wax. This would further tone down the gold rub and buff and seal and protect the paint. I think the vase turned out pretty well but I have to admit I'm disappointed that the floral interior is not more noticeable. 
I definitely want to try this technique again, and I would love to know what you think I should do differently next time. Thank you so very much for watching, and if you enjoyed today's video, here's another video I think you may like.